Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to this special video where I'm going to be taking you on my journey through the Linux operating system, or rather my history of the different distributions that I've used. Now, the reason I'm making this video is I was recently challenged by one of my good friends, Gustavo from Picuma.com, who we've previously had a conversation with, so make sure you check that out. But Gustavo challenged me to talk about my favorite three Linux distributions. So I'd like to do that or rather ramble a little bit and just tell you a little bit about my history, how I got into Linux, why I like using Linux as an operating system, and again, the spoiler alert of what Linux operating system that you're gonna see on this channel here. And of course, if you're subscribed, you've probably already seen this. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this journey here. But as I continue here, or before I start rather, I wanna continue the chain and nominate three other YouTubers to do the same here, whether that's through a tweet or a video, just to talk about what Linux operating system they like to use. So first, I'd like to nominate Jason Turner, who runs CPP Weekly, a great channel on C++ programming, as well as he has done other work on podcasting. He's done lots of great conference talks. And I know Jason does a lot of Compiler Explorer, but I'd really love to see what type of Linux that he likes using or what environments or distributions he's played around with. So I'll nominate Jason first. Second, I'd like to nominate Jacob Sorber, who's another YouTuber who's done uh, lots of work on C programming and other low-level uh, programming videos. And he's also a fellow professor. I'm sure he'll have some great advice maybe for students who are looking into what Linux distribution to start off with. And again, I just to learn more about his setup. And finally, I'd like to nominate One Lone Coder, the One Lone Coder himself. Uh, who does lots of great videos, usually in the longer form on particular topics, as well as several other great series. Again, I'd recommend subscribing to all three of these folks, but I'd love to learn about what uh, the One Lone Coder himself does here. So Jacob, Jason, and One Lone Coder, David, I hope you're ready for the challenge and some of you accept, and we'll get to learn a little bit more about your journey into Linux. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the Linux distributions here, and then I'll just take you on my journey as to, well, what some of my favorite are. Now, the reality is with Linux is there's a lot of different distributions. And I think this is why folks like to talk about them because there's so many different flavors and different features in one or the other. And we can kind of see from where Linux started at the top here, the different branches and some of the evolution here. And I should go ahead and note that this evolution is still alive. You can see these branches are still growing and expanding and there's lots of different Linux distributions out there. In fact, from a high level here, we'll have to zoom in, but chances are you're probably a Linux user yourself or have used some Linux based operating system, whether that's been a TV, a mobile device, a desktop, or maybe a gaming console that has been influenced or is a Linux system under the hood. So just looking a little bit closer here, Linux, the project started around the early 90s, 1991 is the date that I have here. And we can kind of see that due to the openness of the Linux uh, project that we have several distributions that spanned out here, some more on the commercial side, things like Red Hat, which has done a lot of great work on Linux, and then some of the other different uh, Debian Linux and so on that have been distributions that I myself have used. And the reality is I've probably used many of these distributions here just in their later form when I got into uh, Linux closer to the 2000s. So on this uh, particular picture here, we can see some of the different Linux distributions. And I wanna say even on this screenshot, I've used uh, Ubuntu and OpenSUSE and uh, CentOS, Fedora, Yellowdog, uh, Sabian, Mint, Arch Linux, Gentoo, all of these different distributions here, uh, just because I've always been curious and like to try them out. You know, Arch is sort of for the folks who like to set things up. Uh, I've got Mint and uh, Zubuntu, which are other, um, you know, Ubuntu variations that might be a little bit more lightweight that I like using for uh, virtual machines when I give them to my students. Um, I've got uh, Scent OS, which has sort of a different uh, package environment, but has been nice for setting up servers where I have uh, folks SSHing into. So all of these different uh, Linux distributions have some sort of 
specialty often or maybe use case that might give them a little bit of an advantage or maybe if you have a preference to use things in a different way beyond just their actual look of each of the Linux. So again, I'd encourage folks to try out some different uh, variations here. Again, the best part is most of the time you could just grab these various Linux uh, variations for free. That's sort of in the culture here. Uh, of course, that might be various enterprise support and so on, but uh, that's the idea. So again, this evolution continues here. And as I have mentioned, you'll see Android here in 2008 from Google, Pop OS, which is from System76, the laptop company. I use System76. I think they're great uh, Linux machines. Uh, I've had mine for a good five years. Uh, Chrome OS, if you've got a, a Chromebook. So again, Linux has been quite pervasive and quite an important project just through the history of computer science and, and computers here in this information era. So again, what's really cool, I think, is the different variety and just knowing that there's something different out there other than, you know, Windows, which was pretty much what when I grew up, everybody used here. So with that said, on that little uh, tour here of some different Linux distributions, let me go ahead and just tell you, um, I don't know if they're really my, my top three because I'm using my favorite uh, Linux distribution right now. Um, that I suspect you know many other folks might be using, but this is just sort of my my journey into Linux here. So you know, starting from Windows, even as far back as DOS, where you know I basically just knew how to type in a command to you know play a game or maybe search a directory. Um, you know, going from that uh, being a Windows user my whole life. Um, I eventually got curious that, well, you know, there's other stuff out there. And the real thing that sparked my curiosity was really just getting these sort of Linux format magazines or PC magazines or, uh, you know, various magazines that I'd find at the time at a, a Borders bookstore, <laughs> which was a chain here uh, in the uh, US. And there'd be free distributions of various Linux uh, operating systems. So there'd be one with a you know, full Fedora li uh, disk on it or an Ubuntu disk uh, that would come with it. And I remember one in particular that just sounded really cool so that I had to start and uh, take that disk and actually try to install it on my PC. So that one in particular was Mandrake Linux, and that's the very first Linux that I remember installing. I set up my machine for a dual partition, and I just thought how cool it was that I could go into either a Windows environment or a Linux environment. I can't say that I actually did much productive work in Mandrake Linux, other than just that proud achievement of getting a Linux operating system up and running and, and feeling like you were a hacker uh, when I was a teenager here. You know, having seen that uh, various portrayals of, you know, hackers in Hollywood using the terminal and so on. <laughs> I thought that was very, very uh, cool to have that uh, on a Linux operating system. And uh, just being able to, you know, jump into the terminal and, and try to, you know, try a few commands out. So that was really the, the gateway or the entrance to see that Linux also wasn't uh, something that scary. And, you know, it had a graphical user interface. So from a user who is coming from Windows, you know, you could relatively easily adapt to this. In fact, you know, had the uh, taskbar and the different programs all set up for you so that you could easily just launch an application here. So Mandrake Linux was sort of my entry. So I sort of put that as my first uh, Linux distribution here just because I have a fond memory of that uh, moment of getting uh, a second operating system set up here. Now moving on to the next one. I remember in college I was sort of defaulted into Solaris, which isn't really, I suppose, uh, a Linux, but it's a Unix-like uh, operating system here. And what I remember about Solaris is, and this was at the time that Windows Vista was coming out and it just migrated from Windows XP. And I just remember how slick and how cool Microsoft uh, Windows Vista at the time was trying to look. And it had, you know, an updated, you know, DirectX uh, 7 or 8 or, or I forget if it was DirectX 9 powered graphical user interface. So I was trying to do, you know, cool things and look very slick. And then I would go to my university laboratory and have Solaris here, which looked um, more old. It wasn't trying to be as shiny and new. Again, you had just these simple, you know, boxy shaped uh, user interface. And I was really kind of curious about what this was. And, and this was the first situation where I had to be using a Linux uh, 
system, which I suspect for many university students or, or maybe if you're lucky high school students <laughs> have to sort of opt into whatever your computer laboratory has. So I remember feeling a little bit strange about this uh, operating system, but slowly as time went on, I really grew to appreciate this operating system. It was simple, it was fast, it was very responsive, and because I was training how to be a programmer, it made things relatively easy to be a programmer. I could launch a text editor, I could open up a terminal, I could just do tasks without the operating system getting in my way. In fact, it felt like the operating system was something I was in control of rather than this sort of limiting operating system that was telling me what I can and can't do based off of if there was a graphical user interface. So I have sort of a fond memory of Solaris being this operating system where I changed my mental model a little bit about how computers work. Being able to again navigate the terminal and launch programs and think of them as processes and being able to change permissions on files and really start to navigate the terminal. Uh, one out of sort of necessity and two just because I found it was quicker and again I could be productive and focus on learning at this time here. So I have a lot of memories of launching up Emacs and Solaris. I know folks you know, know me as a Vim user on this channel, but again, I was using Emacs on Solaris uh, back in the day <laughs> to do my uh, programming. So somewhere in my brain, the Emacs commands uh, still exist, so I can uh, recall some of those. Um, but Solaris was really a nice uh, workstation in that way. And again, something else that I appreciated about Solaris um, which isn't really on uh, these screenshots here, but uh, I'll go back to the uh, Mandrake one, is that you could set up these different workspaces here, and the Windows management was something that I never really thought of as a Windows user, right? If I sort of back up to Windows, we sort of just thought that of this as the desktop, but Solaris also sort of helped me organize myself as a programmer, being able to choose different workspaces for different tasks that I was working on and being able to continue that over time. So I thought that built some really good habits and change sort of my mental model uh, and that's when I sort of got into the Unix culture or, or Unix uh, user I suppose. So anyway from Solaris continuing my journey would be to Debian uh, specifically Debian 6 I believe the version was at the time uh, when I was working in graduate school and again this was sort of a nice continuation coming from Solaris and I felt like this was a more modern operating system at the time and I was getting a little bit more into uh, understanding how this worked, things like the package manager. Uh, it seemed like it just sort of had everything available. So I remember having sort of fond memories of being able to install different versions of Clang and GCC and compiling my C and C++ code and you know at the time there was sort of a wisdom of different compilers would give you different error messages so I sort of learned how to program uh, in, in that sort of manner. Uh, and then this was sort of the operating system too, where I started getting into different Linux tools and thinking about my tool stack and learning Vim and some of these different um, text editors that were available, uh, learning a little bit about GDB, and again, just sort of programming in an environment that um, you know allowed me to just focus on the actual task here. So uh, I really have some nice memories of using uh, Debian 6 and feeling like Having um, the experience with Solaris and a little bit of the curiosity from Mandrake that now I could really just dive in and not have to make any sort of mental switch whether this was sort of Windows versus a Linux thing. Everything just sort of felt right here. Uh, and again, that was just growing as a Linux user myself here. So I've always sort of uh, liked the Debian line of uh, Linux distributions. I think they've been quite well supported and again fit in that sort of open nature uh, of the Linux culture uh, of being able to um, use really great software and just focus on uh, developing and, and, and getting your programming tasks done. So uh, Debian, uh, specifically Debian 6, would be my third Linux distribution uh, sort of on my journey, which sort of takes me to where I am today, uh, Linux now, and what I use. Well, again, as I mentioned, or may have mentioned, Android's a Linux-based operating system, so I'm an Android user, and I use Ubuntu Linux. Now, I have installed various versions of Ubuntu, and what I can sort of say about Ubuntu is it's usually the first version of Linux that I recommend folks today to install. Uh, just because it's an easy migration, if you're a Mac or a Windows user, you're going to feel right at home. You'll be able to figure things out relatively easily if you just want to use it with a graphical user interface. 
for a long time it was also probably the easiest Linux to install. Uh, maybe that was part of just its popularity and the sort of distribution that it had, but uh, Ubuntu has always been quite a nice uh, operating system uh, for, for folks just entering into Linux to start using. So again, I'll use Ubuntu or variations of Ubuntu like Mint or uh, Zubuntu um, that are a little bit more lighter weight as uh, virtual machines for students. Um, and well, of course, as you folks know who've been watching this channel, you'll see me use Ubuntu in the background. So you're probably used to that uh, tool stack. Now I will say Ubuntu is also something that's kept relatively up to date. It goes through many changes as the later versions have been coming out. Um, so I think it feels really like a modern operating system. Um, and it really is something that I think is a serious operating system with, again, lots of um, uh, sort of corporate backing and, and, and folks use this on the daily. and. Um, you know, professional software development, as I try to do whenever I'm able able, able to do, um, you know, contracting work or these types of things here. So um, Ubuntu, again, is probably where I'm going to stay. I know it's not the most uh, extravagant of Linux out there, but um, it's a pretty uh, nice one that I enjoy using, and it allows me to install the Linux-based tools that I need to use. Um, I have occasionally used Arch Linux uh, to play around with. Again, I like feeling like I'm in control when it comes to the operating system. So that might be one that I throw out for folks, but I'd be really curious in the comment section below to learn what distributions you're using. Are you using Arch and installing everything? Do you like something like uh, Ubuntu that's mostly put together? And something I'm particularly curious about is if folks have a Linux-based phone, like the, the Pine uh, Linux and are you know working on that and, and basically have a, a desktop in their pocket if they want here. I think that's a really cool thing. So folks, with that said, I hope you enjoyed that journey or just listening to me reminisce for a little bit and how I think about Linux and um, my sort of different progression through various versions. This was fun to make, fun to think about, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing if anybody responds uh, of the folks that I've nominated, either uh, Jason Turner, Jacob Sorber, or the One Lone Coder, and then hopefully we'll be able to learn more from them, as well as, again, I'd love to hear from you folks in the comments below or in the discussion. Otherwise, what Linux you're using, why you're using it, and what you're favorite customizations or plugins that just make your environment awesome for you. And uh, with that said, folks, thanks as always for your time and attention, and we'll see you in the next one.